What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video we're going to talk about things I've learned working from home as a software developer. If you guys are new to the channel and you're into tech, entrepreneurship, coding, startups, anything like that, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. That's all we talk about here on this channel, and it really helps me just stay motivated to keep putting these videos out for you guys. So thank you so much. I just put together a list of things that I've been noticing, realizing after this last, I think this is going on almost three weeks now of working from home. Prior to coronavirus, I also got to work one day a week from home. So I did eventually want to make a video like this. I wasn't sure if I was going to do like a day in the life working from home because that's kind of boring. It's not really a lot going on to be honest with you, but you know, I did want to make a video where I kind of just reflect on some of the things that I've noticed, especially after working from home every single day for the last couple of weeks. So the first thing that I've learned as a takeaway from working from home as a software developer is that a schedule or a routine helps so much. Just because you're working from home doesn't mean everything is just spontaneous. Like I'm gonna sleep in and I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna go for a jog and make breakfast and then go to my stand up and then go to lunch and come back and then start work at 11.30 or 12, you know what I mean? Like that could work for some people, but I think for me, I found that having some sort of schedule or routine really really helps to keep you on track and to keep you motivated i mean you guys know how procrastination is if you start saying i'm gonna do stuff later i'm gonna do this first and then i'll come back and do that it'll probably never happen you know what i mean so you don't want to do that you want to make sure that you have some sort of routine or schedule for some people it could be waking up in the morning and doing a workout before you go to stand up that's something i'm trying to start doing a lot more i need to i need to wake up early just because i think the exercise or whatever actually kind of gets the brain moving i think doing something to get your personal energy boosted up and putting that into your schedule is really really important it really helps the second thing is discipline is key 100 so obviously that goes in line that piggybacks off number one with having a schedule having a routine but discipline is key because you need to be on time still like these things are not optional just like you are at work and if anything you want to be disciplined because there's a lot less room for people to manage you now and so if your job or your employer is continuing to pay you full salary full dollar amount full price you know you really should be sure to give them a hundred percent while you're at home because they also can't really be a hundred percent sure of what you're doing all the time but i think that's a good thing because you know i don't think an employer really should know or deserve to micromanage you they don't own you but just because you're at home as an employee as well i don't think it gives us as employees the right to take advantage of our employers and just be doing whatever, like fall asleep during meetings or you know, all the crazy stuff you've probably been seeing lately with all the Microsoft Teams meetings around the world that are going on. Like people are leaving their cameras on while they're taking a dump in the bathroom. Like it's all type of stuff happening. So, you know, I think it's still important to be responsible, to be respectful to the company, the employer that hired you, you know, and it's a trust building thing. So I think it can work out better for the employees and the employers in the long run because the employers can actually finally learn that they can trust their employees. People can work from home. People don't have to be micromanaged. People can get things done. People can lead their own lives and make decisions and still be effective. Um, and for employees, they can realize that I don't have to live this rat race and make this hour long commute and give so much of myself and my money into gas and commuting and everything when I could be home more with my family and still getting my job done and taking care of my family as well. So I think that this is a really good opportunity to for employers and employees to kind of build a mutual respect and understand each other better in like a professional working relationship type of a way. So, you know, being disciplined is, is a big key. Also, I was gonna say, uh, be active in meetings. So a lot of times, you know, if you're working remotely, you're going to be in a lot of meetings and they're gonna be all virtual meetings. Now, some companies have different policies about having your cameras on. At my company, we really usually don't have our cameras on unless we're like cracking jokes or just want to see each other or whatever. But usually we join by audio. So 
I say that to say it's very easy to just attend a meeting and put yourself on mute and not participate at all. And to be completely honest with you, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do. As long as you're still in the meeting and you are actively there listening, paying attention and everything, if you choose not to interact or unmute yourself, like it's not a big deal, but at the same time, I think it is important to, you know, because you're not having human face-to-face -face interaction with people and again, because there's no real ability for anybody to really truly know or like have transparency 100% of what anyone's actually doing, I think it's important to be vocal to communicate, to, you know, just still let your team know that you're there, that you're a personality, that you're 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 a friend, you're a comrade, you're a coworker, you're in this together, you know, that you're not just off in isolation, wanting to be left alone, don't talk to me, I'll come to meetings, I put myself on mute, and then I don't even say bye, I just hang up when the meeting's over and I come to the next meeting on mute and just don't be that person. You know what I mean? Just, you know, Take the time to still talk to people if you can, or at least communicate as effectively as you can in these meetings. Don't just be in there on mute all the time. But the third thing is non-technical stuff. So having something non-technical to do, I cannot stress how important that's gonna be when working from home, just because number one, you're already at home and it's great, don't get it wrong, it's great. But you know, I'm realizing that over time, you know, it's just like being at the office, like you're just in the house all the time. So instead of being in the office all the time, you're in the in the house all the time. So no matter what, you're gonna have to find ways to break up the monotony of both coding and being in your own house and in the same environment, you know, for a, a big portion of your day. And so, you know, I think it's I think it helps me at least be effective when I step away from coding a lot to be honest especially if i'm struggling with a problem or something so to always have some sort of books or you know something interesting that you like to do or that intrigues you um have something that you can kind of step away from the computer give your eyes a rest give your mind a rest give your break a, your, your mind your brain a rest and um basically do something that's not technical you know that's why i mentioned exercise earlier because i think it can help you be more effective when you can take a break and when you know when to take a break and you have something to take a break for, something that re-energizes you outside of just coding, you know what I mean? And then the last tip I have about working from home is minimize leaving the house until you're off work. So I think a lot of people take work from home days like, okay, I'm gonna come to stand up in the morning and then I'm gonna run to CVS and do this and I'm gonna run to Walmart and do some quick grocery shopping. The problem with that I think though is that you know, you never know what's gonna happen. You don't know how traffic is gonna be. You don't know if a pop-up meeting needs to happen, if someone's gonna have questions for you in the middle of doing all that. And it's just so not good when people are in meetings and trying to do other things in life and you hear a bunch of noise in the background and they're trying to talk to that person, but they're trying to handle this problem over here too, but they're not on their laptop, they're on their phone because their laptop is at home and they're not home. Like you see how, quickly this can all kind of get messy. It's like, it's a lot better if you still treat the time that you have at home as dedicated work time and you account for those things. So, you know, at least tell your team if you're not gonna be able to be around and you have to go run an errand, that way you're not like trying to run that errand but still be engaged with your team. You can just let them know that they shouldn't expect you to be available until you come back or just save it until you get done with the entire day and you're officially off and then you're free not to worry about any of that stuff. So that just really helps your team and just keeps communication flowing and keeps the sprint moving like really effectively when everybody's communicating, everybody's in the loop and everybody knows when and how to get in touch with everybody. So those are kind of just some of my takeaways over these last like two or three weeks of working from home remotely, whatever you want to call it, um, due to the coronavirus. So um, hopefully that was helpful. If it was, make sure you guys leave me any comments down below if you have any questions about anything. Also check out the description box down below if you guys are into like coding or you're thinking about going to a coding bootcamp. Um, I'm giving away my free intro to coding bootcamp course. It doesn't cost anything except your email address, but I'm teaching everything from like doing a front-end project through intro to back-end stuff so you'll be really well prepped to go into your first week of coding bootcamp if you take it so i highly recommend checking that out and then also if you guys want free resources or more resources that i don't always give away in the description box in my videos you can also check out the description box and join the free private facebook group where there's like already a handful of people that are over there growing getting added all the time and i'm giving away all my resources over there that 
you know, like learning resources, study materials, bootcamp stuff. Like there's so much. So make sure you guys check out that in the description box as well. And this is Darian with Darian the Dev, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. All right, peace.